Hello everybody and welcome back to another modern gameplay video. Today we're gonna be playing a Jeskai Lightning Angel deck that I've had sitting on the table for like a year. I've been meaning to play it on the channel for such a long time and today is finally gonna be that day. So believe it or not, Lightning Angel used to see Fringe play in modern several years ago and I always admired this card. So I got really excited in Konzatark here when Mantis Rider came out because it was like a three mana version of Lightning Angel. Um, but it did have one less toughness. So it was in lightning bolt range, but the one less mana was definitely worth it. So these two creatures are going to make up our sort of win condition core of this deck um, because they're all hasty flyers and getting for lots of damage really quick and be annoying. And they also have vigilance, so they're good blockers as well. Um, so we also have some supportive flyers in here like Spell Queller to exile spells and be annoying and Brazen Borrower to bounce permanence and be annoying as well. So in a way, you can call this deck like Jeskai Flyers, Jeskai Aggro, Jeskai Tempo. It is by no means control because there is no counter magic in here. It's just all hasty flyers and removal and burn and stuff like that. We even got like Lightning Stormkin in here to be super aggressive. I waited so long for Watsi to print something like this. I was like, when is Watsi ever going to print a two mana, two power, hasty flyer? And they finally gave us Lightning Stormkin like a year ago. I was really excited, but we actually only played this card once on the channel before, so I'm really excited to finally give this card another try because I believe it's really good. Um, this deck might also be able to use a copy of Civic Saber if you wanted to get crazy. One drop only, one equip. You can make your Lightning Angels and Mantis Riders really threatening, but unfortunately we're not going to be doing that. So. We're gonna play the deck as is, let's do it. And before we get into it, a huge thanks to all of our supporters over on Patreon for making this channel possible. Their names have been scrolling down below. And if you would like to help monetize this channel so I can keep doing this kind of content, you can find the Patreon link down below in the description. But if you'd like to show your support for free, leaving a like, comment, and subscribe is very much appreciated. And an extra special shout out to The Real Shroom for being our top tier Patreon supporter for the month. And be sure to check out our sponsors, TCG Player and Mana Traders for all of your Magic the Gathering needs. For the best in MTG and MTG accessories, check out tcgplayer.com through our decklist link down below. Anything you purchase through that link really helps out the channel. And if you want to play some magic online, consider signing up with Mana Traders in the link down below using the code that's on screen right now to save 15% and you can rent and play all the magic decks you want. And with that, let's get on to the video. Hope you enjoy. All right, we are live here on Twitch. Got our deck freshly rented out courtesy of Mana Traders. This is Jeskai Lightning Angel. So of course, Mantis Rider, Lightning Angel are our main win conditions. The Hasty and Flying Vigilancers. Spell Queller is there for support as well as Brazen Bar, where V-Click is there for support as well. It can be hand disruption. Stop on our opponent's draw step and fix their hand so their biggest threat is not there. Um, and of course, the Lightning Stormkin is our two drop Haster Flyer. Um, our removal spells of choice are going to be a play set of Helix, Bolt, Path, and then two copies of Burst Lightning because I wanted some extra burn. I was contemplating whether or not I wanted to put in, I actually completely forgot, maybe Firebolt, maybe Jeskai Charm, I'm not sure, but yeah, we're going with Burst Lightning. We have 24 total lands, not 23, because I am, remember, the master of mana screw, so I had to go with more so that I can hit my land drops, because the deck is very three drop heavy, curves at four, although Brazen Borrower can sort of somewhat act as a two drop, so it can be good. Uh, sideboard, we got two copies of Celestial Purge, which, oh, that's what I considered. Instead of Burst Lightning, I was considering, I'm considering main decking two Celestial Purges because that's something that people are doing in modern right now, the current meta, because there's so much black and red. So people are just preparing with main deck purges, but I decided to put them in the board. And of course, we got three copies of Rip because can't go wrong with the, the best graveyard hate in existence. Um, two copies of Stony Silence for anti-artifact synergies. Um, which, you know, that could be technically looking at it. We don't have any way to just hard kill artifacts, which that's kind of a no-no. Um, but at least we got Brazen Bar where to bounce. So there's that. Two copies of Kira the Great Glass Spinner. If we're going up against a removal heavy deck, we can bring in Kira and make it so the removal does nothing. And then two copies of Pyroclasm because it sweeps away the little elf decks and such, but also does not kill our Queller, does not kill our Mantis or Lightning Angel. So it can like keep our guys alive while killing theirs. Two copies of Teferi for anti counter spells. There's a lot of blue right now. So if you can go up to a set of this, I'd recommend it. Like there's so much of those remand into Archmage's Charm into Cryptic Command, Snap Cryptic Command, Mana Leak decks right now. Two copies of Damage Sphere for anti Tron and combo. And with that, we are ready to go on to the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. 
Got a game here against Co205. We won the die roll. Gonna be on the play with some Jeskai Mantis Burn Angel Flyers. Um, that's gonna be a keep. We got some good tempos. We have a lot of quick uh, fast lands, but I think I'm still gonna start on the shock. No, that doesn't make any sense. The fly is back. I see you fly. All right, just start on the fast lands. It just it just makes more. Dude, this fly has been here the entire stream. I'm so excited. I'm gonna move to a better place where there's gonna be no flies. I know flies are everywhere, but it's going to be an actual house. I can't believe it. I haven't lived in a house since I was, what, like 15 years old? What, like over 10 years ago? It's been a long time since I lived in the house. And that was technically an apartment. The last time I lived in a house, I was... Probably like nine. I spent a lot of my life living in rooms and yeah, just rooms. That most of my life spent living in rooms and uh some of my life living in apartments, but yeah. Uh we're going up against Tron. We are straight up going to petty theft on their map. To be annoying because they're annoying. The opponent tanked a lot. Of course, they're gonna have natural Tron anyways. It doesn't matter that they had the map or not. They're still gonna have natural Tron because that's my luck. And yep, there's Tron. They got Tron online. Alright, well, we're going to draw step click them, make sure they don't have a really good bomb, but they have a full grip of seven, so likelihood they will have something really crazy. Click you. They have Sylvan Scrying, Karn the Dank Creator, Karn Liberated. Well, I think I'm going to take Karn the Great Creator because it's the most annoying. Karn Liberated, if they just minus on this guy, then I can just follow up by bolting their dude. So at least I can deal with it. Whereas Karn the Great Creator just wins. So let's take that so they can't just go grab a bridge. Like if they get a bridge, we straight up lose. Yep, there it is. Are they going to plus or minus? They're going to plus. All right, well, um, let's toss away Raisin Borrower, maybe? Or do I toss away Steam Mints? I think let's toss Steam Mints because we have enough mana to cast everything we want to cast. Let's attack Karn. And pass turn. I guess we're going to ditch um, probably Lightning Helix. Or a Brazen Borrower. Let's ditch Lightning Helix. No. Brazen Borrower. Dramatic Star. So I can kill Karn here, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I can deal Xaxxes 11 to Karn here, but I'm gonna use all my resources and they still got a full grip. Dang, Tron's obnoxious. And there's the map. And then go get their blast zone and put it on three and kill both of my fairies and then I'm going to be down to nothing. I wish Tron didn't exist. It just breaks all logic of, of the game. 
One plus one plus one equals seven. Yay. All right, let's bolt Karn. Flash in Brazen Borrower. Untap and let's Helix Karn. Go to combat, attack Karn. Karn already soaked up like 19 damage, but I have no choice but to kill it or else it'll just reset the game. Tron was in a reference to the movie Voltron. I think, I thought there was a movie already called Tron. Thanks, 12. Where are you moving to, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, Central United States. Chromatic Sphere. It's just a matter of time before they find a car on the Great Creator to go and grab a bridge. There's the Blast Zone. That's what I was talking about. They're just going to grab a Blast Zone off the map and take it up to three, kill both my fairies, and then I'm going to have nothing. And another map to go and get another Blast Zone, probably. So I can deal with my next thing. Come on, give me a lightning angel. I need a different mana cost threat. Getting another tower so they can just Ulamog us soon. Another lightning helix. I'm getting there for six. Alright, I'm gonna keep playing it out until I see a threat, but they're already 21 cards deep. They're, they have such a high chance of finding something. Yeah, I'm not gonna beat an Ugin. Man, Tron is just obnoxious. Like, I even bounced their map and they still just had natural Tron. All right, well, we're going to bring in Stony Silence, Damping Sphere. Um, Teferi is not terrible. And uh, we're going to cut one path, double burst lightning, triple helix. Uh, yeah, let's do it. Your cousin moved to Colorado a few months ago and he loves it. I love Colorado. Uh, specifically Colorado Springs. I wish that Grand Junction was a little bit safer. Because if it was, that'd totally be my dream location. Kind of is my dream location, like the Red Valley area. If I had if I had a lot of money and could buy a house anywhere, it'd probably be like on that northwestern side of Grand Junction. Like if I had to choose anywhere in the world. That or I'd go buy a house like in the hills of Norway somewhere. Or like maybe on the Faroe Islands. If it was easier to get food there, then I would say the Faroe Islands. But yeah, Faroe Islands, Norway, or um, or Colorado, one of the three I would choose. All right, let's go Steam Vents. And I think I'm just going to toss out Stony Silence. All right, let's do it. Throw out Damping Sphere. Yeah, you ain't gonna get your natural Tron on me. You would've thought. Of course, all my Tron opponents always get natural Tron on me. They're gonna pretend like they didn't get it. Of course you did. Of course that Tron lands in your hand. I know it. I can see it, even though I don't see your hand. I see it. You're holding Tron. You're just pretending like you didn't have it just because I played a Damping Sphere. And I, I'm getting mana screwed again, but it's okay because I got hate pieces. All right, we're going to draw step, click them. All 
All right, what you got? They have Wilt, Sylvan Scrying, Karn. They did not play Karn the Great Creator, though. Did they just draw it? I'm also very scared about Wilt. But they don't have the green source. I'm also scared about Karn because they can go and grab a bridge. But they might not be able to empty their hand quick enough. Yeah, they just scoop it up. Let's try that again. I think that went well. Hey, Bolstiru. Tron is a reference to Voltron because you have to assemble it just like Voltron lions. Never heard about that. Norway is pog. Yeah, Norway is beautiful as heck. I love, I love Norway. Don't think I can keep this. I need more hate pieces. That one doesn't have hate pieces. I think I have to mulligan for hate pieces. I'm not going to four, so I'm going to keep this. Um, let's bottom Arid Mesa. And Teferi doesn't really do a whole lot in this match. You have a few Norwegian friends and they speak better English than your English friends. I met, I've uh, had a lot of Russian friends that speak very, very good English accents more than most other accents. Like, if a Russian person has an has a American accent, you can't even tell they're Russian. Like, there's the slightest hint of it, but yeah, Russians are really good at doing English accents. It just comes naturally with their, with their language, just provides them a good English accent. They have the right mouth practices, whatever you call it. Mouth shapes. All right, let's go blue, red, lightning storm can get in there for two. Oh, would you look at that? Not natural Tron, I can't believe my eyes. But they're still gonna have turn four Tron. O stone. Well, I'm gonna have to go damping sphere. And then I can go to Fairy, bounce the Oblivion Stone. I want to draw a Brazen Borrower so I can bounce the O Stone again. They're going to wilt that. That sucks. Let's go to combat, swing two. All right, now which one of these three spells do I wanna play? Do I wanna click them to make sure they don't have any good bombs? Or that'll also prompt them to probably crack their rose stone. Yeah, let's, let's do that. I'm sold, I didn't even consider the other options, but I'm already gonna do this one. Cause I don't want their follow up to be nutty. Worm Coil, Ugin, Ulamog, and Wilt. All options that I very much hate. Um, well, it's not going to be Wilt. I don't think it's going to be Worm Coil. It's between Ulamog and Ugin. It looks like they're a little bit short of, of Ulamog, so I think it's going to be Ugin, because that could just come down here and be annoying. You have a few Russian friends and their covers instantly blown up. Well, I've, I'm only saying this based off of two Russians I've known who literally live in Russia and grew up in Russia, but they go to like American schools. So they just like have, they just learned English and like really, like their English accents just sound natural. Like it sounds like they grew up American. All right. Um, well, the opponent's obviously going to blow up this O stone here. So. Just get in there for five. There it is. 
Unfortunately, I can't petty theft my own stuff. And I didn't have a stony silence on time, but it is what it is. I wasn't going to mulligan to four. Worm coil's okay. Uh, let's just toss out Brazen Borrower. And then I'll just a fairy bounce. Let's get in there for three, put them down to 11. We unfortunately cannot hold a spell queller, and they are probably going to recast that um, worm coil. If they draw a trial land, they're going to Ulamog and killing us. So they are going to throw out a Karn Liberated. What's that going to hit? My Brazen Borrower, I imagine. They're just going to plus. Um, well, that Karn's going to destroy us, unfortunately, and there's nothing we can do about it. Um, I think I have to ditch the Queller. I'm just try to go for lethal at their face. Please give me something. Okay, that's what I wanted. Perfect, perfect, perfect. That is exactly what I wanted. Attack them. All right, we are so stupid close. Unfortunately, I sided out three helixes and two burst lightnings. They would have been very, very helpful right now to have in the deck. Think of Vugan. They are still one short of Ulamog. They're exiling Brazen Borrower. Oh no! They found a card in the Great Creator to get them whatever they want. Oh no. Right at the last second. It's always right at the last second that my opponents win. They're going to go get Witch Bane Orb. I know it so that I can't top deck a bolt. I know it. You already know it too. It's going to happen. Why do they have to find that at the last second, dude? They're getting liquid metal coating. I guess that's fine. They're going to activate it on Teferi, probably. All right. Let's double bolt their face, because if we find a lightning angel, that could be it. Please. They're going to stop at our upkeep and activate coding on Teferi. I don't care. Give me damage. Yo, that's it. That is it, boy. Give it to me. Please connect. Please just connect. Please just connect. Please just connect at their face. Oh, my goodness. Screw off, Tron. Get out of my face. Get out of here. I don't want to see you ever again around these parts. Get out of here, Tron. Just, I, I don't want to see you. Just, just be gone. Be gone. <laughs> oh my goodness. I can't believe it. That, that one's going in the record books. Got a game here against Star Zeke, and we won the die. We're going to be in the play with some Jeskai Mantis, and we are lacking white mana. Oh my goodness. Uh, you know, me being the master of mana screw, I should probably mulligan this, hoping for white mana. But I think I'm going to risk it, because we have such good white cards that, like, just a single white land will get it for us. We have. How many non-white lands do we got? We got two mountains, two islands, two steam vents, a whole place at a spire bluff canal. So I guess we have a good deal of, of non-white lands. Our only white lands is one plains, three flooded strands, four scalding tarns, two arid ma three arid maces, I think. Got one or one sacred foundry. I don't know. Looks like storm, because if it was like an is it Serum Visions deck with with Shiv and Reef, the only one that would play Shiv and Reef would be Storm. I think I've also seen it in Kiki, but I don't want. I just. I'm not feeling Storm right now. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm not feeling that their deck's not Storm. I'm just saying I'm not feeling like I want to play against Storm right now. I'm just feeling so sick of it. <laughs> I, just, I just don't want to go up against it. I just really don't. I'm just... My current mood 
just says that I really don't want to go up against Storm right now. It just seemed like an absolute boring time to have to sit through right now. Like, I want to play. I want to play the game. I don't want to wait for my opponent to storm off for 15 minutes. All right, Selendi, I also might be Breach. Um, let me just make sure. Yeah, it's Storm. It's Storm. Wow, dude. Wow, I already drew a non-white source. And watch them play a Baral out of any, like, Storm dude. And so that the burst lightning doesn't hit it. Electromancer. Okay, I can I can kill that. All right, kill the electromancer. There we go. We hit our land. Let's go get a basic planes. And get out a Mantis Rider. And get in there for three. Still, our odds of winning are extremely low, but, you know, at least we can put them on a clock. They have two turns to win. Because next turn is go Mantis Rider, bash for six, and then bash for another six and Helix them. So they have two turns. And seeing as how they serve visions and double opted, odds are they got it. All right, Brawl. So if they whiff, I'm going to have to Helix that Brawl. Yep, Mama Morphos. Let me guess. Ritual in the Piff. People were talking about banning Pass and Flames for years. I haven't heard it recently, but back when this deck became a theme thing, and even before that, when it was Pyromancer Ascension Storm, I've heard so much talk about people being like, ban Pass and Flames, it's too busted, it enables a lot of Storm decks. And the, the Storm deck, the, is it Storm deck, like, like the deck they're playing? is a consistent turn three kill. And that's something that Watsi wanted to eliminate, yet they never did anything about it. Grape shot. Are they gonna kill Mantis? I like the fact that they only got four cards left. So if they pass here and I Helix Baral, I feel, I'm feeling pretty decent. If they are gonna kill Mantis, and a little bit of me. They're gonna kill they're gonna kill me inside. Yeah, they were just terrified I was sitting on counter magic. And they're gonna remand the grave shot so they can use it again. So they can loot here. They're shocking esteem vents. Are they gonna grape shot a second time here? So they can kill the mantis. Oh, they're gonna Hieratic Ritual. Did they find a piff? Did they find a Alright, they're just gonna grape shot. All at me, and one at Mantis Rider. Yeah, they had to do it again because they hit the Mantis wrong. They got two cards left. Please just pass so I can kill Baral and, and have a happy time. And they have Empty the Wards. GG. Main deck empty. Alright, so give me Pyroclasm. Give me... 
Damping Sphere, Teferi's not terrible. Rip's fine. Purge technically hits the go the the Electro Man, but we don't need it. Mm. Burst technically, um, tech it doesn't hit Baral, so sure I'll cut it. I guess I'm gonna cut um, Lightning Angel because it's slower. Um, keep all the removal. I guess I'll cut a couple Brazen Borrowers, maybe. Sure. You know, maybe I should bring in Celestial Purge because they might bring in Aria Flame. Um, let's submit like that for now because I don't know what to cut. I'll try to cut one more thing here. Cut a, uh, a click. So like that, sure. All right, we're going first. Sure, I'll keep it. It's kind of mediocre, but it should do the job. Maybe will. Because they won there without um, without Piff. So turns out they don't need Piff to win. So tired. All right, fetch for a basic, which I should have probably done on the first turn fetching a tap land, but it's all right. Get ripped out now before they remand it or do something. Maybe I should have went for all out aggro, I don't know. They're gonna opt the OT. By the way they play their deck, it seems like they're probably a storm specialist, know exactly what they're doing. Um, should I go to Fairy here? Just straight up. I don't think so. I think I want to get the clock out there. I'll just play a creature here so I know exactly what to do next turn. Helix plus Stormkin. Yeah, I had to clock him. That's what I had to do. Over to Fairy. Um, you know, I think I will go to Fairy here. Seems fine to me. Man, so laundry. Okay, what you grab? They grab pieces of the puzzle, which is kind of the same thing as the laundry vision. Uh, let's just cantrip here. We had a path, not terrible. Gives me an answer to a Brawl or Electromancer this turn. There it is. If they go for a spell, I'll deal with it. You know, I think I'm going to path it either way here. Because I do want to save my Helix for their face. I'm giving them more mana to work with next turn, at least, but... I could have done it on their upkeep or whatever, but... I just wanted to do it now. Because if I saw, if they untapped on their upkeep with that thing, they might have cast a bunch of spells. Like ritual gifts and all that kind of jazz.
All right, let's go for a lightning stormkin. I have six points worth of burn and I'm getting in for five. So I do have lethal next turn. I just EOT toss my burn at their face. So if they don't win here, we got it. Because because it's a fairy, they won't be able to respond to anything. So as soon as they let me go to the end step or go to the end step, then it's just over. Opting. Pieces are, they didn't get it. They reveal six cards. Ritual, opt, and pieces of the puzzle. Or they got a ritual and an opt. And nothing. All right, EOT, Helix you. And bolt you. And untap and go to combat. GG. We're going to game three. Possible, odds are low, but it's possible. Storm's really good, but I do have Damping Sphere and Rip, so I have hope. I'm hungry. I'm gonna have to go and get fast food after this. Usually after MTG streams, I just go and get fast food because um, it's usually super late and I'm too tired to cook food. I stream all day. All right, double queller. I quite like. I guess I'm gonna keep it. I'm not gonna risk going to six and getting a worse hand. So let's keep this one and hope that double queller is good enough. What if they get out the turn two, dude? They're gonna have a chance to go off on turn three, like before I have the chance to even hold up a queller. And even if I could hold the queller, they're likely to just remand it when I go to cast it. So. It's going to be a very, very uphill battle, especially not winning game one. Them, like, now they're going to be on the play in game three. It's going to be very terrifying. And whatever turn two dude they have, I really hope it's Electromancer and not Brawl. Because if it's Brawl, then, then this doesn't deal with it. Or whatever this is. What do you call it? Pyroclasm. Okay, well, that's something to do on the second turn. Hello. Gizball11, thank you so much for the follow. How's your evening? Ritual into Aria Flame. There it is. That's why I brought in the Celestial Purge. All right, get down, Lightning Stormkin. Your go. I gotta find the purge though. I really have no card draw on this deck aside from Teferi minusing, so. It's only two cards and 50 that will get the Celestial Purge. So what is that, like a 5% chance that we'll draw Celestial Purge? I think it's lower than that. It's two and 30, so it's essentially one in 30. Or one in 25. So yeah, it's like a a pretty low chance. I'm gonna hold up Queller. Get in there for two. Four percent, yeah, something like that. Mama Morphos, I'm gonna deal with that. I'm gonna quell it. They have one card left in hand and they can't remand here, so. With one card left, I feel like Queller is, is really good in this scenario. And I don't want to give them any spell casting opportunities. I don't want to let them chain spells and trigger that Aria Flame more. I have to race it at this point. Lightning Helix, not bad. I'm still just going to hold up another Queller. Get in there for four, put them down to 12. Looking good. Are we actually going to take down Storm? Degenerate Storm. Serum Visions, again, I'm going to quell that. It's a cantrip. I don't want them to be chaining spells. I can't allow them to chain spells. Or that's what's going to cause us to die to Aria Flame if they chain spells. 
are down to 24. And they play land. They're empty handed, boy. It is over. All right, we're going to get a Sacred Foundry. Ooh, that's good. All right, red, blue. Is this lethal? Get them to one. All right, let's just get let's just get out rip here. What's your top deck? Pyrotic ritual, that ain't enough, boy. And it's over. Man, GG's. Took down Storm. Wow. I love one of the most satisfying decks to take down is Storm, Eight Ractron, Boggles, Jund. Or any any deck that plays Inquisition Thoughtseize, Crypto Command decks. Well, yeah, this is one of them. This is one of them, for sure. Got a game here against Pal W, and we're going to be on the draw here with some Jeskai Mantis. This is probably going to be a mulligan. I don't know about this. Six lands path. I think I can safely take one mole. This one I'll keep. And I'll bottom a land. I think I'm going to bottom probably one of the Spire Bluffs? Question mark. I don't know about that. We'll see. Let's just do it. Screw it. Get a distribution of all different color combination lands just in case of land destruction. The opponent mulligan of six as well makes me feel a little bit more comfortable. But seeing Island and Serum Visions, I know we're losing. Because the opponent's going to probably storm off game one and there's nothing we can do about it. You know what I should put in the sideboard? Probably some deafening silence. She hasn't made the email yet, but she goes to pee so often. Because Diva probably drinks a ton of water. I, I drink quite a bit of water during the MTG streams. That's why I usually take like one or two pee breaks. Pee break is the name of a super good Mario Maker level. Because it's iconic. All right, the opponent's on Demir, Heartless Summoning, Art, but there's no Gyruda, so what is this? Not quite sure. I have a feeling we're about to find out. Street Race Cycle. It's gonna be like, no, no not Narfi. Having a Lich? Is it having a Lich combo? Oh, it's, it's Mirrors. It's uh, Alter of the Brood. Yeah, it's gonna be difficult to interact with, but we do have rips in the sideboard, so that will be good. Rips are good here in this match, and, and Demir, not sure they have any way to deal with that other than Ratchet Bomb, potentially Blast Zone. But if they did want to Ratchet Bomb on two, they'd blow up their own Heartless Summoning, so that's a plus. Alright, let's grab Hollow Fountain. Ooh, Spell Queller. I want to hold up Spell Queller so bad because I don't want them to resolve an Altar of the Brood. Um, yeah, I should probably hold up a Spell Queller here just to potentially hit an Altar because I cannot let that sit. Also, I would have to counter a Mirror if they have another Mirror. You're trying to drink water equivalent of 10 or uh, 2.5 liters a day 10 glasses been doing well that's good i at a point try to drink a gallon of water a day because i think that that's like the recommended or something i i, I read 
I'm not sure if it is, but I think I read it was a gallon a day. So I would have this gallon over there that I fill up and I just throughout the day just try to drink it all. But I stopped doing that because I keep forgetting to drink water. I keep I always forget to stay hydrated. But seeing as how many empty bottles I have next to me, you guys don't even want to know. But there's like 20 empty bottles next to me. It's like I drink so much water and like every time I get up and walk this way, I try to like grab a couple and slowly but surely like toss them in the recycling bin. Um, but yeah, they start to pile up. All right, let's toss out Spell Queller since they didn't cast Alter. Let's draw Mantis Rider. And get in there for five and they're dead next turn. Oh, you know what? Oh no, I couldn't have gotten lethal there. So if they have the altar and uh, a mirror, then they win. And there's nothing I can do to stop it. At least shock a land so I can just bolt you. There's the altar. And there's the mirror. GG. All right, sideboard, we're going to bring in Rip and we're going to bring in Damping Sphere. And maybe Teferi because Path is trash. Burst Lightning can do without. And we can do without a Helix. Let's go like that. Doesn't she literally have that water reward, the ASMR water, where she'll just have two glasses of water and like pour it into another cup in front of the mic? So like she literally must drink a lot of water if she's at all times got two glasses and a full gallon of water next to her. This combo is ancient, real shroom. This combo is old. The mirror retriever combo. So the idea, all right, hold on, let's 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 check our hand first. Triple helix, but we're on double blue. I'm gonna say no. I don't want to go to five. I don't want to go to five. That's a damping sphere, so I'm gonna keep it. Toss one of my lightning angels. So the the mirror retriever combo is that heartless summoning makes your creatures cost two colorless less and, and gives them minus one minus one. So if you look at the stats of Mirror Retriever, if it costs two less, then that means it costs zero. And it's a one one. So you know what that means when it enters, it'll instantly die. So you have, you gotta have two Mirror Retrievers, one in the grave and one in hand. You cast one from your hand, it'll die. And when it enters, when it get put into a graveyard, you return the one from your graveyard to your hand. You play that one, that one instantly dies. You return the one in your graveyard to your hand. You repeat this loop forever. So, to win, you got to have an altar of the brood on the table, which says whenever a permanent enters, you can mill your opponent for one. So when you repeat the loop forever, then your opponent just gets milled out. And of course, the opponent took my sideboard card, and now my hand is suddenly sucky. And they're going to get out a heartless summoning. This pull of the vault's more fun. Yeah, but it's more fragile. Yay, I gotta land. Still can't do anything, but I gotta land. Come on, deck. 24 land deck. You can do it. Just give me one more. They're gonna peek. More cantrips. This deck used to be in, in uh, 
Golgari and I think Soltai because Jared's Orders is like one of the perfect cards for this deck because you can fetch one Mirror Traver for the graveyard and put one into your hand. So Ger Gerard's Orders was, was great in here. All right, well, let's dome their face. They shocked, so they're holding something up. Hey, would y'all look at that? Now, don't you dare have a counter spell, like a spell pierce. It's a spell pierce, isn't it? I know it. Yeah, I know it. Well, I probably should have waited on this damping sphere until I got down to fairy. Oh, no, resolve. Good. All right, so now I'm feeling a little bit better, but I have a feeling you're going to have a way to bounce that EOT and then go off, or like bounce it and then just go off. Like an unsubstantiate or a wipe away or a repeal. Okay, we got our land. I think I'm going to go for Teferi just to get a little bit more protection. Right? Or do I go for Mantis Rider? Or let's just go for a draw step click. Let's do it. All right, click you, try to take a combo piece from you. See if we got a drown in the lock or something to counter. Got the Thought Scour plus Drown. There's the Echoing Truth. Deal with our Damping Sphere, but we're going to try to make it so they can't go off here and we're just going to recast that Damping Sphere. All right, target you. They have Alter the Brood, Heartless Summoning. Um, well, they have Double Swan Song, so rip the Damping Sphere. Um, I think I'm going to take Heartless Summoning. And then I'll play to Fairy so that they can't Swan Song, and then I'll Damping Sphere. Yeah, it's Bottom Heartless Summoning. You know, in hindsight, I probably should have uh, I should have bought them the altar because now they can go altar plus cantrip, whereas before they just go heartless summoning go. All right, drop out to fairy so that I can resolve my damping sphere. I need to get this out really bad. First priority. They have no burn, so I might as well just minus to fairy to draw a card here. They thought scour again. There's a land drop. Nice. It's a swamp. It's an Aaron Mesa swamp. They're down to twelve. A top deck land would be the best, so I can go Damping Sphere plus hold up Spell Queller. That'd be so good. Serum Visions, sure. They gotta throw at that that altar here. So the other thing that I that I was thinking um, that I would replace burst lightning for was a braid, and a braid would be just beautiful right now. I really think that it should be a braid over over burst lightning for tech. But then again, burst lightning has a versatility of being able to hit face, which helps with your aggro plan. Whereas a braid can only hit creatures and could be dead in many matchups. So. It's more versatile, but has its uh, has its downsides. It really depends on preference, but I think that if I was going to a, a high level tournament, I'd probably do a braid over burst lightning. 
fetch here and let's grab a sacred foundry not bad take up here and i'm just going to straight up get out this damping sphere just to make sure just to make sure so my plan is eot brazen barware to bounce their altar and then next turn i'll be able to spell quell their altar and they won't be able to get it back because of teferi so i can deal with it it's just we had to pull some strings to get there Peek, or you can see what I'm about to do. There's the altar. Uh, that's fine. Let's just let it go. We'll bounce it at the end step. In the off chance they hacked into Simeon's spirit guide. Petty theft, bouncing altar. They see it coming now. They know what's going on. They saw our spell queller. They know we're just going to hold it up. Lightning storm can awe on one land away. I'm able to get that toasty lethal. All right, attack for three and pass a turn. And this should be it. All right, spell quell. Now their next spell is going to cost an additional one mana there it is and they can only cast one more one drop yep they scoop it up so wheat on the sideboarding gonna leave it exactly the same I, I don't think i need anything in particular so yeah i'll turn it right back no the mana screw master you got it wrong crocosniff the mana screw master not the sleep master I'm not the master of sleep by any means. I don't fall asleep super easily like, like most people do. It takes me a while. And um, I usually only sleep for like seven or less hours because I have so much work to do. I set my alarm to get up earlier, usually so I can accomplish more in the day. YouTube's a heck of a busy job. All right, I'll keep that because it's got to rip into some disruption. The master of being sleepy. I wouldn't say so. I could stay up all night if I wanted to. It's just, I go to sleep because I have to, not because I want to. Sometimes I do, sometimes, some, I get those days sometimes where I'm just like really sleepy at night, but sometimes I'm just like, usually the nights where I'm in a hardcore Destiny gaming session and I'm just in the zone playing some Destiny and it's just like, I don't want to stop. I, I just want to keep going, but I have to stop because I should probably get some sleep. But if, if it was up to me, I, I'd be able to game on Destiny for many hours at night. I get super hyped to play Destiny every night, though, because I spend the entire day working. And it's like, as soon as it's like 2 a.m., and it's like, yes, I can finally get on Destiny for a couple hours before going to bed. And I'm just like super pumped to play. The opponent thought seizes us and they take our v-click not even worried about our rip because they probably brought in a way to deal with it like a ratchet bomb or something or they probably have another thought seize let's take the stop off their jaw step alter the boot i'm guessing there's a spell pierce or something like that a spell pierce or a spell snare but i'm still gonna go for rip i even drew a backup rip which is great and there's the swan song get a birdie All right, let's see if they got the nuts here. Because technically you can win with this combo on turn two. Just turn one altar, turn two heartless summoning, double mirror. It can happen. Oh, would you look at that? Another one. But I'm just going to hold up the spell queller here because it makes better use of the mana. And they gave us a flyer to give them a clock. 
I've definitely given some people some tokens with Swan Song in the past that just ended up killing me. So if you're if you're gonna Swan Song, be ready to to win, or else that bird's gonna clock you. The two two flyers, no joke. They're milling me. They milled my damping sphere, which is pretty lucky. All right, let's fetch here. Get a steam vents shocked and throw out the spell queller. Um, let's play a Scalding Tarn so that we can pay for a Spell Pierce if they want to cast one. But yeah, I don't think they're expecting triple rip here, so this should be great. Let's go for rip. Go ahead and counter it all you want. It's stuck. Alright, so currently the combo is shut off. Um, you know, since we saw their answer to it is Echoing Truth, then I think that means we don't have to play the second copy. Also, fearing Ratchet Bomb, I probably don't want to play the second copy anyways. So we should probably just pass, right? Yeah, let's just pass. Lightning Angel is going to make quick work of them. It's going to put them on a two-turn clock. We got four cards left. And their combo requires them to have three more cards, double mirror and a heartless summoning. So the odds they have it are extremely low. Hey, Q QXI. Quixie. They're transmuting for heartless summoning. Yep, they're getting heartless summoning, not outgoing truth. All right, let's get down lightning angel. And I don't think they can win here. Um, I have the rip. They're like, in order for them to win, they're gonna have to go land, echoing truth, Harless summoning mirror mirror. Which the odds of those are their exact five cards are like one in a million. Land. That's step one. Next step is Echoing Truth. We know they have the Heartless Summoning, so they have two of the, the five steps. The question is, do they got Echoing Truth, Mirror, Mirror? Heartless Summoning? All right, Echoing Truth time, come on. You got it? No Echoing Truth. And I got a Helix, so if I somehow do not get lethal here, the Helix will definitely give me lethal. Get in there for seven. There's the echoing truth. Sure. Lightning helix your face. And that should be it. So they did have the echoing truth. They had three of the five. Almost got that one in a million chance. GG, we took down Mirror Retriever combo. They yoinked it from us in game one. So the deck is some serious business. Like that that Mirror Retriever deck, see, they almost had it. They had four out of five. They almost had the absolute nuts. So close. We almost died right there. That deck is like actually legit. I, it could be really good. I think their build is super solid and people should give that deck a try. If you're interested, give that deck a try. It's pretty good. Got a game here against Jock87, longtime opponent of ours. See, now this is what we talked about earlier in the stream. Is that Jock87, ZLS704, and the Diplomancer are probably people in the Twitch chat possibly watching the stream as I play, seeing what our hand is, because we go about against them all the time. And it doesn't seem like it could just be a coincidence. I feel like the odds are that they are in the chat. Because they could have a different username on on Moto that they do on Twitch, so I could never tell. Although, I'm pretty sure I have seen Jock87 in the chat before, and their name was Jock87. So, at least give them a little credit there. Alright, red, blue. 
Get down, Lightning Stormkin. Get in there for two. Pass turn. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, Croco Sniff. I was thinking that, that you never know, like, it could happen because the the sheer amount that we play against Jock 87, I feel like, you know, they got to know that we're streaming right now. Like, either that or it's just they happen to play on Monday evenings just like I do. They're, same with ZLS 704 and Diplomancer and everyone who I play against all the time. All right, well, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to hold up this Queller. Are they on one of their typical Kiki decks that they're always on? Um, do I eat that? You know, I think I am. That's a lot of good setup. It's a preordain. I'm gonna get a Steam Mints. I didn't want to give them any fixing there, so I took that. And they have a bolt that was expected. Nice bolt you got there. You can tell they own their cards and they didn't get it off like card hoarder or whatever because it's a sweet copy. It's got a bear. In the picture, that's swagging. All right, let's start with Mantis. All right, white, blue, red, Mantis. Getting there for five on a three turn clock. But what are they doing? Are they kicking? Are they storming? With o Omen of the Sea rather than a spell, I doubt it's storm, but. Could still be Breach. Seeing as how that thing scries, I'm guessing Breach. But Jock87 has played a lot of Kiki decks, so I'm starting to think it's that. So another one. White, blue, red. Archmage's Charm time? Nope. Getting there for another five. Does it connect? Yep, they didn't find triple bolt, only double bolt. Galakut's Awakening. Oh, are they Iron Crag feet? Are they Iron Crag? They might be Iron Crag. Oh, we're gonna get dragon stormed, aren't we? I feel like we are. You, I know you don't take much advice from chat since you're better than most of us. But I know I've been thinking about it for a while. Stream sniping MTGO players, being sniped as a streamer of all sorts is a weird place to be. Yeah, doesn't you can never know if you're stream sniping. I've I've been stream sniped a lot in the past and it, it sucks, but it is what it is. I gotta just keep on playing. It's not like I can just stop the stream. I gotta just keep playing through it. I have no choice. There's a breach. There's the Emrakul. Of course. All right, so, you know, they probably are gonna bring in sweepers making Kira irrelevant, but if their plan is to just bolt our guys, then Kira does stop it. I'm gonna bring in Teferi. And that's all I can really bring in. Path doesn't really do anything, so let's take that out and I guess bring in Kira. Man, Blue Moon's kind of busted. I always said this deck was busted. Just play a Moon, play some counter spells, and then just like Breach and Emrakul. It's kind of nuts. Um, I'll keep that just because of the Teferi. Nope. Pass turn.
let's go get achievements. Drought Lightning Stormkin, get in there for two. All right. Will the master, will YouTube's master of mana screw draw a land on curve? We'll find out more after this. No. The answer is no. I right, get out another lightning storm kin. We got a remand. I'm guessing remand. Fire Prophecy, and they get to scry one. Getting there for two, past turn. They're down to 14. Please, 24 land deck, thank you. All right, I'm gonna hold up the obvious here. A spell queller. We're gonna bolt it, sure. You know, I might end step. Um, I think I'm gonna end step, um, click them rather than draw step because I'm not fearing breach right now. Omen of the sea, sure. I'm fearing breach next turn, but not right now, so that's why I want to end step it. They did not find their mana. All right, I'm still gonna click them. Gotta take a Breach or an Emrakul. There's Mana Leak. All right, I'm gonna get out to Fairy so that I don't have to worry about counter spells anymore. I'm just gonna minus the cantrip here. They are going to opt in response, looking for their fourth land drop. Yo, Sam, how's it going? How are you recovering? Are you fully recovered? How goes it? Hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for that resub for 18 months. That's a year and a half right there. Welcome back and enjoy the emotes yet again. Preach. Nothing. All right, we're going to go for a Sacred Foundry. Or maybe expecting Blood Moon, I should go for my, my basic lands. Like a basic plains. Tick up, and uh, I guess we shock here. And just pass a turn. Leave up Spell Queller and Breach. Or Spell Queller and Brazen Borrower. But they're likely just going to breach the Emrakul here and we die. Yeah, nothing we can do about that. Yeah, we're just dead. That, that deck's busted, man. That deck's crazy. Um, one of the top decks in the meta at the moment. We're actually, hold on, let me look this up. Where actually is it in the current meta? Hello everybody and welcome to the speed up session for today's video. As you know, we like to speed up the longest games in the video to make sure it's not way longer than it should be. And as I always say, if you want to catch the full games, unsped up, unedited, and uncut for the video, you can go to the Twitch link down below in the description and check out the entire VOD there from last Monday. Or you can come out on a future Monday if you want to catch the gameplay live before it goes up on YouTube. You can see before everyone else does. You can even play against me if you'd like. I welcome that as well. And uh, just so you guys know, if you haven't seen it yet or you haven't heard yet, I am now doing weekly videos for Card Market. The link to their channel will be down below. And I'll also have it pinned in the comments. Uh, it might take me a second if you're watching this day one, but it will be there. 
or you can just search card market on youtube i already got three videos up there and there will be more to come weekly all right so we're speeding up only one game today and this is against burn and uh it's very surprising that burn was the longest game in the video but then again it's really not because like the past like 10 or 20 times i went up against burn on the channel uh it has consistently been one of the longer matchups in the whole video and i don't know exactly why it's just that burn's been grindier lately it's like you you gain a little bit of life or prevent a couple burn spells then it the game just becomes a top deck war at that point and i guess that's why the matchups are long because you can barely hang on you can make you can exhaust their entire hand get to the point where it's back and forth back and forth until they find burn or until you somehow you know stabilize and control them out until you can get a win so burn just has turned from like a five minute matchup typically in magic's history to a half an hour matchup just over the past year or two it's just the way that the meta has evolved so they get to be on the play in game three which is very terrifying because obviously it's burn you don't want to be on the draw against them especially in game three um but i have a lot of good stuff against them i, I have a whole play set of lightning helix i brought in celestial purges i got bolts burst lightnings all these removal spells so i have a lot of ways to deal with their creatures so if they get a creature heavy draw then we should have a good chance at dealing with them um, because of all our removal and i got a lightning helix and i throw it off right away to get out of double bolt range get myself to nine meanwhile i got a lightning angel that's going to start beating them down and now it's just a matter of if they can top deck three burn spells which they find one and i control them out got the spell queller for extra insurance and we take down burn and with that let's go on to the wrap up hope you enjoyed all right let's talk about some jeskai mantis and or jeskai flyers jeskai angels I I love the deck. It's satisfying as heck to look at. It's just so beautiful. The color scheme. My one of my favorite cards, Mantis Rider. One of my favorite cards, Lightning Angel, just in the same deck together. One of my favorite cards, Spell Queller. Having the Bolt Helix Path Package, which I personally love that removal package and love playing it in Zoo. And I love Lightning Stormkin. Just this is just a mixture of a bunch of cards I love. So the deck was very satisfying for me personally. Now, was there any problems with the deck? I would say it it maybe lacked a little bit of answers. Like maybe somewhere it could use another counter spell besides just spell queller. Um, the burst lightning was a, an extra removal slot that I was like, what am I gonna run here? I could run Firebolt, I can run Burst Lightning, I can run Celestial Purge in the main deck, I can run a braid. And a braid would probably be the better option because it gives you some some way to kill an artifact, which I don't think looking at the rest of the deck, there is any way. Looking at the rest of the 75, there is no way. The only way is like bouncing with Brazen Borrower and Teferi, and that's all I can see. So if there's like a problematic bridge or whatever you won't be able to deal with, uh, you know, you can deal with it temporarily and get in for lethal and burn them out. Like um, that can still happen, but just for the sake of consistency, might be worth the, an upgrade in that slot. Or maybe you don't even need more extra removal in that slot. Maybe you can go with another creature because in all honesty, Despite this being an aggressive deck, I think it could stand to be a bit more aggressive. That's kind of saying a lot, but I think it could be more aggressive. Maybe go with another two drop. Maybe go with a one drop. Like, um, is there any good one drop flyers or evasive guys that do some good things when they enter? Like, is there any one drop blue fairies that do that? Or like spectral sailor maybe? Or anything that would grow that you could benefit from? I don't know. Maybe there's got to be something like that out there. But yeah, the deck could use, can stand to be more aggressive. And by doing that, I would say lower the curve. I'm not saying cut Spell Queller, Mantis Rider, and, and Lightning Angel, because that was like the main core of the deck. We utilize V-Click and Brazen Borrower a lot, but I feel like those were kind of the weaker links. We did put Brazen Borrower's um, Petty Theft ability to good use many times, not saying it's not a valuable card. And we did use V-Click's um, ability clutch a lot of times to make sure the opponent didn't have a good bomb. But the deck could honestly do without them and do with something to lower the curve. So if you were to cut Burst Lightning, V-Click, and Brazen Borrower, that gives you eight slots, eight extra things. And what can you run that's less than three mana that can help you be more aggressive? Maybe you can go with the Stoneforge package and toss swords on a Spell Queller, toss swords on a Mantis. Maybe you can do that. 
Maybe you can uh, go with a play set of Sprite Dragon and go with the play set more of spells so that you can do a little bit of spell casting shenanigans. Maybe go with like some like Sprite Dragon plus Mana Morphos. Maybe you can do that. But yeah, I just got to say the deck's going to be more aggressive because it's what it, it's what the deck's aiming to do. And if it doesn't do it, then you're just kind of lacking. Like if we just go land, land, remove something, land, hold up a spell queller, it's fine. But it's not what the deck's plan is. It's not meant to be tempo. It's not meant to be control. It's meant to be aggro. So focus on aggro. That's what I got to say. If you were to try to build a version of this deck yourself, Sideboard is fine, although we did not really have any answers to um, artifacts and enchantments. And also, I would probably find a way to fit Deafening Silence in there, because it doesn't really affect us that much. Meanwhile, it would be good to stop Storm. Damning Sphere is there to stop Storm, but is two copies en enough? Maybe not. Pyroclasm, you can probably do without as well, because of the sheer amount of burn and removal we have in the main deck already. I think you're fine. I mean, it's not, it's not bad to keep it, but... You know, I don't think it's absolutely required. I love Teferi. If you can go up another Teferi, I would. Kira is fine because if you're like, we unfortunately didn't get to use Kira today, but if you're going up against heavy removal, she will just absolutely annoy the heck out of your opponent. Like I've played this card in spirits in the main decks, like two of like this before, like way back when I used to destroy tournaments and, and do good at GPs with like my spirits deck, I would have two main deck Kiras. And when I'd never, I'd go, whenever I'd go up against Jund or Jeskai or Grixis or whatever, they would just struggle because their removal spells did nothing. So I love Kira. I would keep her in. Stony Silence was basically our, our way of dealing with artifacts, which it actually worked once against Tron and uh, it could work again. Although, would you want to rather remove artifacts or have a way to just shut things down? Like if you're going up against anything that utilizes like Urza, like Thopter Foundry decks or like Tron. It depends on the matchup really, but it's up to you. I'd keep the three rips. I usually go four rips in boards, but I pushed three today and I think it's fine. There was a matchup where we literally drew all three of them and we needed all three of them because one got countered twice. All right, well, that's about it. I'm starting to ramble on like crazy. So I hope you enjoyed it. And that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button down below. It's totally free and really helps out the channel. But if you wanted to go the extra mile, you can check out our Patreon link down below in the description. Patreon is a platform where you can help to financially support the content creators you love. And a big shout out to all of our current Patreon supporters whose names are on screen right now. And an extra special shout out to our top supporters for the month. And another way to support the channel is by supporting our sponsors, TCG Player and Mana Traders. If you want to play some Magic Online, consider signing up with Mana Traders in the link down below using the code that's on screen right now to save 15%, and you can rent and play all the Magic decks you want. It is what I personally use and how I had filmed this video here today. And if you want to pick up some Magic cards or anything Magic related really, you can pick them up through our deck list link down below. That's our TCGplayer.com link, and anything you purchase through there really ups out the channel. They are the best of the best on the internet when it comes to Magic the Gathering singles, sealed product, and accessories. And that's about it. Again, thank you so much for watching the video and I'll catch you in the next one.